<laughs> Everybody loves fried chicken. Come on in. Chicken restaurants have known great success, especially that southern fried like Mammy made. How better to promote the favorite of Negroes, fried like Mammy was in the kitchen. Coon fried chicken was the ticket. At My Southern Inn, where chicken was fried in front of a window in sight of travelers, Bob's Place in 1921, and in 1923, Mammy Shack. So Max and Lester Graham played on a track record, but he needed a gimmick to win big. So in 1925, when he and wife Adelaide decided to open a restaurant in Salt Lake City, Utah, they featured Southern Fried Chicken with a coon. It was a hit. You see, Graham had a long history of being an outstanding business entrepreneur. He was a clever businessman who looked for the winning edge. He and Adelaide had enjoyed chicken at a restaurant outside of Salt Lake and thought it would be advantageous to offer the best fried chicken closer to home. Open 24 hours, the Coon Chicken Inn. It did not disappoint. A second restaurant was opened in suburban Lake City, Seattle, in 1929, and a third in the Hollywood District of Portland, Oregon, in 1931. And not just chicken, but appeals to bring you back again and again. Entertainment with a cabaret orchestra was available in Seattle and Salt Lake restaurants. Soon, catering was offered. They delighted in advertising the nationally famous coast-to-coast -coast coon fried chicken. Delivery service was available until 2 a.m., bringing hot chicken to your door. That is, unless you lived in the Negro neighborhoods. But no problem. Blacks did not patronize coon chicken in. The Grahams advertised widely to come on in and enjoy great food in a family-friendly atmosphere. Just another eatery in then America. During this era in American history, signs were everywhere depicting blacks as jokes, making them commonplace. The darkies, the coons, the pickaninnies. On advertising, product labels, on posters and postcards, and even at the movie theater. Just another day in America. As long as the people enjoyed the food and the entertainment at Coon Chicken Inn, they continued to support the business. There was also money to be made on collectibles. Specials were served on coon caricature, dishes, they had silverware, matchboxes, and fans for children. Collect the menus, placemats, souvenir postcards, and most popular, spare tire covers. Hang the clock in your home. Get the money clip, a cookie jar, and other household collectibles that can be found today. The Seattle NAACP said enough is enough. In September 1930, they filed a lawsuit against Coon Chicken Inn claiming the restaurant's name and iconography amounted to libel and defamation of a race. The major newspapers ignored the suit. But the story was covered in the Northwest Enterprise, a local Black-owned newspaper. They had also filed a lawsuit that year against Fresh Products, Inc., a Seattle peanut company, over the product Three Little Niggers that displayed three colored children standing in a peanut shell. 
In response, Graham agreed to change the style of advertising by removing the word coon from the restaurant's delivery car, repainting the coon head entrance to the restaurant, and he canceled an order for 1,000 automobile tire covers. He violated his agreement with the NAACP, but managed to evade the lawsuit by changing the color of the Coon logo from black to blue. The Portland and Seattle locations closed in 1949 and the Salt Lake City location in 1957. The legacy? People are still buying grinning Coon collectibles.